to go ahead and call us to order at 6.30. Are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? I don't know. Uh, yes. Fred? Uh, so we're, are we going to talk about Millhouse at some point during the meeting? Is that I was years? not planning on talking about it tonight. I would like to address that just because I've seen a couple of posts on Front Porch Forum that are a little concerning to me. Okay, um, let's do that in. Um, and were you gonna were you gonna talk at all about the um, energy well, efficiency? One second. And... One second. Let's add the mill house to the as bullet six. So in the follow up to previous. Okay. Yep. Okay, so I can do, if we do Millhouse generically, I can cover a couple of things I want to cover. Yeah. Um, and then <clears throat> I got an email in my pressure email today from Senator Sanders' office um, talking about a uh, seeking proposals in the federal government's uh, appropriations budget for projects. So I'd like to maybe just chat very briefly about that. Okay. Uh, let's do that at the top of our new items. So it's number two. New project senators, uh, senators, senators. Okay. Any other modifications or additions? Okay, let's review orders. <laughs> Yeah. One thing downstairs. What's that? So I forget the budget status report downstairs. Um, Allegiant trucks, plant, plant, and supplies for a total of $493.50. Allegiant mechanical maintenance, $649. Cassie Boisano basketball rack, $40. City card payment for postage, programs, books on tape. Building repair and maintenance, office supplies, um, $35.97 from the village, safety equipment, office supplies, office supplies, and acquisitions for a total of $973.76. Fisher Auto Parts, uh, a tube, Krylon, air, air filter credit, supplies and filters ties for a total of $400. $401.18. Gravel and Shea PC um, reporting overpayment of $30. Griffin Pinot basketball rep, um, $20. Ingram library books on tape and grant fund purchase, $910.06. Isabel Sullivan basketball rep, $60. Jacob Earl boots, $225. Johnson Hardware Rental Supplies, Paint, Vest, Hat, Keys, Keys, uh, Blade Wrench, Screws, Nuts, Bolts, Light uh, for a total of $467.98. Lamel North Modified School Union Education Tax, $743,000. This one's a big one. $474.15. Yep. Okay. Uh, and the next cool. one's a big one too, which is. Yeah, that's what I was meaning. The next uh, one. Milton Cat is the greater $385,000. That's a million dollars. Yep. Uh, any discussion on any, other, any of those so far? We have a note to sign for that. Shelburne Memorial Library. Library puppets, eighty-two twenty-five. Staples business credit, battery backup, um, a total of three hundred and forty thirty-four dollars and seventy-four cents with a hundred and one oh five due from the village. And Winter Equipment Company, a razor system for winter parts and supplies, nine hundred and ninety-five dollars. What is that? The winner? Razor? Yeah. I think it's a new brand. It's got oh, for the blade? Okay. Next item on the agenda review and approved minutes from February 6th. Move to approve. Second. 
And a second. All those in favor? I'll recuse myself. Okay, aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Um, select board issues and concerns. Anything worth bringing up? I always have buttons. I'd like to hear from the planning commission on uh, units that hear the results of their uh, survey. Paul sent him a note uh, just a few minutes ago saying he has a conflict tonight. Um, he's unable to attend if I was hoping to. Wow. Um, so I would recommend you bring that up again next time. Because we're going to be ARPA 100% of the time after the meeting. Noted. <laughs> uh, okay. Any other issues or concerns? Uh, we lost Rosemary. Uh, let's skip to you, Jason. We'll go back to Rosemary. Highway report. All right. Uh, salt usage, we're 188 tons used. Winter sand, we're at 3,800 tons used. Can you speak, and just speak up a little bit? And uh, what is that perspective, Jason? I don't know what we typically use. It. For salt in the past, they use around 400 tons. So, so we're or, or less than half. So far. And we then, may use a little tonight. Yeah, probably towards the uh, early morning. And winter sand, we're at 3,800. We're just a little over half years of what we Stop every year. Uh, we do have a drain weekend. All of us uh, virtual. I put that on here. About grant work. Um, we received a greater good impression. Some potholes and other stuff around town. Uh, truck 19 got a new cut in it. That's what Eric was asking about. And the salt truck got its new cut in it. That oh, so that's salt, not slat. I was wondering, wow. wondering what a slat truck was. Okay. It's all right. I have to type those in my report, too. It's, uh, and then I've been getting quotes. I've got the quotes now. I'm going to order all the back of stuff that's in the plant for this. Uh, and one of the things I want to uh, talk to people about was uh, well, a couple meetings ago, we, uh, there were 60,000. That was left over from previous years of paving, and it was asked if I could talk to Blake about if we could get some small stuff done. I talked to Brian, and I wanted to get the board's take on using this year's money to lose that sixty thousand to do a bigger project and get more done while they're already mobilized here in Johnson. I think when we had talked about this last, and you guys can correct me if I'm misremembering this, because it does happen on occasion. I think that Rosemary was saying that in terms of spending, that would be fine as long as we can allocate it accordingly. Um, and I think we had already. I thought we already that. gave the green light on it. Well, I think what Jason's asking about is not just spending the 60000 and this year's money, but also since we're pretty close to next year the 2024 budget using the 2024 like the money that's yeah that's what we had talked about i think we had talked about both in the past we had talked about okay. using both the 60 plus new budget in 2024. okay in july 1st will be new a new year yeah <clears throat> i guess we didn't take that out of here so that's good uh, I am that's the way I mean that's what I think we had decided. We should just confirm in our old minutes, maybe, but we had if I recall, we have a substantial amount that was carried from the year prior. Yeah. We were going to use the current year's budget. And yeah, if you can roll in next year's in that same time frame uh, before around July 3rd. Just make sure that Rosemary is aware of what you're talking about doing. Yeah, I wanted to get the Okay, to look into it before I had to play both a few rows in them. Yep. Uh, I ran off again. I'd, I'd like to hear. I, I, I think there's a difference between 
rolling it over into another year's budget and spending it in the current year budget. And I, I think that's what you're getting at. Mm -hmm. um, we had talked about her about being able to allocate it, allocate the spend. Yeah, I, I guess I don't specifically remember. I remember the discussion about thinking that we should spend it on payment. <clears throat> um, I don't remember the concept of rolling it into next year's budget for one big project. I, I'm not fundamentally opposed to the idea, but I think we should at least ask Rosemary yep. if there are any ramifications to doing that. Budget, you know, budget Were you thinking along those lines? That, that's yeah. my recollection of, of the conversation we had prior to that also. Um, I don't think there's going to be any problems with it, but it doesn't hurt. We've got Rosemary here, although not literally here right this second, but yeah. we have Rosemary here, so we can ask her about it and get some advice. Yeah, I suspect it's not going to be an issue, but... Um, yeah, it makes it makes sense to try and so in essence we would be using three fiscal years budget so paving at the same time. Yes. Because we weren't able to get the it project did. done and we told them, you know, we don't want you to do it when the weather conditions aren't right, because that's why we're having problems on Clay Hill now anyway. It got rolled over into this year and working with scheduling them, it looks like we could roll it again. Well, they promised us they'd do it in the spring. So yes. if they're not promising us the spring, we need to push pretty hard because that was the deal. They, if they couldn't put it in the fall, they would do it in the spring. Yes, I yes. agree with that. I, <clears throat> my recollection of the conversation was we had a commitment from Pike that they would get it done before July 1st. Yes. which would get that portion of the money spent in the current fiscal year, which I think there's value to having that done. If and, if they, you know, if they want to time it in such a way or if they're willing to accept payment after July 1. We haven't explored that with them yet. Yeah. And every indication we have is that it is still going to be completed before July 1st. There's... Uh, no, nothing is indicated otherwise. Can I ask you, Mary? Yeah, please. So, um, <clears throat> part of the discussion while you were gone was the balance of the held over paving money. Mm -hmm. Could we roll that into 24's budget year to get a bigger job? Yeah. So, Even if it was 23 original budget. Or 22, even. I mean, so you could do three right years now. work at once? Basically, Basically, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm still hopeful that we could do the major job prior to July 1. Jason wants to talk with Pike to see if they would, if he could have another 160, basically. Yeah. By the new budget year. In, in yeah, after mm -hmm. July 1. Mm -hmm. Essentially. Yep. And that you don't see any problem with that. No. Okay. Cool. And that might make it us more attractive in them scheduling us too. <laughs> so I think one of the questions for Pike might be if they can time it such that it's pretty close to a July one time frame for the paving that they were going to do for last year. Enroll, you know, if they would accept payment. For the additional one hundred and sixty thousand for another job, so they didn't have to demobilize and remobilize. That's what me and the rep talked about. Yeah. There's been speculation up until now with uh, them doing the job. You know, hopefully, weather depending, mid May, end of May, and then if they get, they ran in a little bit, it'd be great in June, and then the billing would come thirty days later, so it would fall perfectly for all. Um, Cool. Okay. Well, see what else do you have, Jason? 
That was pretty much it. Uh, I guess we can a little bit more talk about when the plan purchases come up, like the guardrails in the back or stuff. But, but. Okay. Have you had a chance to to run this new uh, razor blade system on your plows yet in snow? Yeah, my truck's been on for about two weeks now. What's the, the initial? It's it scraped it down really nice. It's quiet, and uh, it used to use the. It's hard to do because we've only been a week and a half, but there's a noticeable salt. I don't have any track yet as far as it has. They haven't done it for like a month or so. Is what we use like based on for like what we use in a month time. For me, being like keep track of it. Next month or next meeting, I'll have more information on what that really is. Save the two Cool. Yeah, excellent. Um, Jason, you also talk about a uh, training on grant work. Yep. Is that just you? Is that what? What is that? That is all for us. That is a virtual thing um, when we're doing grant work. And, uh, I don't really know exactly what it's about. Uh, the first one that went on is a three part thing. It's a three hour class. It's nine to eleven virtually. Okay. I just wanted to say uh, I know Duncan's been over to see the new grader, but if you guys haven't yet, you really ought to go check it out. It's a Pretty good piece of equipment. And, uh, I, I took a group down to see it. Did you? Yep. Did you get up in the seat? <laughs> no, I didn't get up. There. You need to sit in that seat <laughs> to get the full effect. It yeah. was still rolling off the trailer when I was there. It was cold, so I wasn't. Was grand. Well, probably you can describe it better, but sitting in that seat is like. I told Jason that he's going to have to watch Mark make sure he doesn't go to sleep in it. <laughs> it's pretty comfy. Perfect. Pretty soon he's going to do it from without Mark. Really? <laughs> just joystick. Yeah. Okay, we need well, to keep moving. We have a long agenda. Um, oh, yeah, we do. So, Treasurer's Report. Rosemary. It's a budget status report. Just take one and it. There you go. What does it mean? I still missed one thing. To date, we are at 51% of budget. It seems like that's higher than normal. Am I wrong in saying that? Well, we're more than halfway through the year. We are. And the reason I say that is because I think that last year, Later in the year, I want to say it was March or April, even. Mm -hmm. We were not much more than halfway over. And I was concerned that we weren't going to spend. You're like, oh, don't you worry. <laughs> uh, yeah, it catches up. Yeah, it catches up. So is it an okay thing that we're about halfway through the year and halfway spent? I think so. The only thing uh, a little concerning might be winter singing. Or Actually, forty nine thousand to date, a little bit over budget. I think we had decided that we were going to buy more. I think we had yeah. talked about buying okay. more. Okay, so that yeah. was over well, we're underused. So right, right. And we had uh, pre-supplied everything, so we didn't need to. I thought that was salt. We did. We did both. We did both. Okay. Um, and total revenue is that ninety percent. That's good. Mm -hmm. Anything stand out for you, Rosemary? Any any highlights that we should be aware of? I mean, it, that that's after we paid the seven hundred and some thousand to school district. Yeah, that doesn't come up for no, operating. That's not uh, here. No. Okay. Revenues we still got left is the uh, highway. Uh, we got the. The fourth quarter of highway <clears throat> state aid money. And we have any more pilot? We've got all the pilot money we we're going to get. 
Maybe I'll get some more. Um, oh, so when they pay in March. Maintenance of grand list comes in at the end of March. Well, that, is that four times a year or twice a year? The maintenance of the grand list? Yeah. Once. Oh, it's just one one mm -hmm. shot? Yeah. <clears throat> Rosemary, I didn't hear that. Not, what about the grand list? The maintenance on the grand list, the state pays us oh, okay. so it's much right. per parcel. Yeah. And that's one time. Yeah. Um, can we take a note to have to ask Lydia if she can send each section of this to the respective committees so that they know where they are, both in revenue and expenses? Sure. Um, I know that the Historical Society meets one, monthly yeah. with Rosemary Perfect. and does that. I think we should get in the habit of doing it for all of our committees. That's good practice for them to all be. I'm not surprised to hear that. And it's, it's good practice for everyone to be receiving that. Especially the committees that are getting after and on. Yep. Yep. So it's like <laughs> something that, that we don't want to make a one time request. We want to make it maybe quarterly. Quarterly? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else? What else is on your list, Rosemary? I got the greater note for two hundred and sixty five thousand dollars. There's a capital equipment note. And a capital equipment borrowing resolution. And a tax certificate. That's a resolution authorized one person to sign. No, it's the whole board. Everybody's going to sign. Those are the things that the board's going to sign. Okay, so we have the greater note borrowing. And also the borrowing note, and also the resolution, mm -hmm. and also the tax serve. Should That's we a, read the resolution uh, into the into the minutes, or it's like a couple three pages long. Okay. <laughs> <Good idea. laughs> Never mind. Sorry. We it's should the minutes should reflect though that we're two hundred and sixty-five thousand for five years at four point four nine percent. Who's financing your resume? Union Bank. Um, let's do this. Let's, in order to make a motion, let's read them off based on their title and any other identifying information. And I have three things here, not four. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Don't have the borrowing now. I'm surprised no one can. That should be the top one. Okay, then I don't have the. Is the greater note in the borrowing note the same thing? Yes. Okay. okay. So, would somebody like to make a motion? You want them on the whole slate, or it's up to you. Don't care. I'll, we, se I'll second the whole slate. We should identify the documents for the balance. So I think. Okay. Part of that motion would be the capital equipment note with Union Bank of two hundred sixty-five thousand. Alan Johnson resolution on capital equipment borrowing and tax certificate on a capital equipment note. Correct? That's all. Yes. Okay. That, that was a motion. Second motion. I just want to make sure you said that was a motion. Yes, that was my motion. Thank you. And you're I'm okay. seconding. Okay. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Okay. Let's sign. Well, and I got the listers have sent a certificate of no appeal or suits pending, which can be signed anytime after the first February of the year. To my knowledge, there is no suits pending. I would. To your knowledge, is there are there no that is spending? Yeah. Okay. 
I would move that we sign the certificate of no appeal or suit pending. <clears throat> um, in this, I guess it be signed by the assessor. Terry has already signed it. We require our signatures. Okay. We'll second. And second. Any discussion? Go ahead. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next, Rosemary. I have a first and third class liquor license for Sudoku. That's the uh, college. college. And we need a motion. Make a motion to approve the liquor license for the Sudoku. The, so the, so? Yeah. So there we go. The normal letters being sent. Second. Second. On discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes. Have it. Okay, next, Rosemary. I didn't happen to pass out uh, a packet from Ken Harry's attorney to us. No, can't seem to find it. Well, I'll give you the gist of it. Um, there's an abandoned mobile home down at the park in Highland Heights, and there's He's going through the process to take the trailer over. And there's about $9,500 worth of taxes due on this trailer. So, and I'm not sure. He has to go through this process. I'm not sure if he can sell it or they can turn it over to him. I've heard he's going to take it take it over and destroy it. So we're probably going to be out $9,500 in taxes. It's in not. actual taxes? 7,100 in taxes. And, and the rest, rest is penalties, penalties and interest. And, interest. Okay. and it's probably not livable condition or? I don't think so. Is there anything we'd have to do to bring the VCA into the conversation? We might have to in a whole look. Abatement hearing. If we're going to abate the taxes, yeah. we'd have to. Isn't it? I don't know if the court can say five years worth of taxes. Yes, three or four years of taxes. The person didn't live in the the trip. The mobile home. Who, the owner, his brother was living in the in the trailer. Then okay. we have basically no expectation of being able to get those taxes. So, um, I guess we need to wait to see what happens with, with the court and RVs. Yeah. Because they need to file it in the paper. It needs to be in the newspaper and do some more filing. Okay. The first step. Yeah. Okay. okay. And Maybe we could, is, there, is it possible, Rosemary, to email the. I VCA? will, because I thought I copied six things of them. I don't know where they are now. It's well, okay. Does any of the board want these, this kind fancy of um, binder, fancy yeah. binder one? Thank you. It's, it's certainly handy for the chair. It's the same one we got in the mail today. Yes. Okay. I've been a lot on for sure. Yep. And is that, we typically we would hand one at the town meeting out to the one that's uh, dedicated to. You want to sign one now? We can. Might as well. Here. Um. Do you have anything else, Rosemary? That's it. You know, everybody should get their town reports in the mail, hopefully today or tomorrow. We send it on the inside cover, typically. Typically, and yeah, somewhere in right there. That's a nice place because it's. Okay. Uh, next up, plan purchases. All right. We've got the plan purchases as the uh, first of the supplemental pages that weren't in the packet. So we've got three items planned uh, before the next, or for the, the next period uh, that are over $1,000. The first one is uh, pins and bushings for the backhoe for repairs. Uh, Jason, you said you had some updates on this one? Yes, uh, there's one that uh, I some previous meeting for uh, Don that's going to be fun to do. 
which is the maintenance. Uh, the representing bush in the outrigger and the main boom, and uh, the district for the main boom. And then this is the first stage, and then once we get that done, there's going to be about the same price work to do the bucket and the cylinder going up the bucket. But this is the first round. So that's the first item on here is the 1793? Yep. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, what, what would that do again, Jason? What does the- Pins and bushings on- The, the cat back home, the 430 that I wanted to share, uh, or now yeah. uh, that that's the they outrigger that's the pins and bushings for the outrigger and the pistons, the main room, uh, top and bottom, and the swing pistons, and the main booms piston. And once we get that completed, we would order the or put in another request for the bushings for the tilt bucket and the front cylinder on the tilt bucket. So the front front bucket needs well, some the, no, not the front bucket. The the arm the so on the front of the tilt bucket. Okay. The, the, as far as you know, the front bucket itself front bucket, is okay. Yeah, it's good if you have know over here. She happens to see the when he's back. Where does this, what line does this fall into in the budget? Uh, parts and supplies. It's just normal wear and tear, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, back, we've got about 3,000 hours on this. For this uh, and the village is going to make a contribution to the parts and supplies or? I'll review our agreement with them on uh, maintenance costs. <clears throat> So maybe. Yeah, that it's. I don't remember specifically what our agreement is for that for for maintenance. I know we for the tractor that was split. I I don't remember if the backhoe we shared maintenance costs on or not. Usually, uh, they like for the filters. They they bought the filters. We did the oil change kind of thing. I don't see. I'm not trying to speak for Brian, but I don't see yeah. them not willing to pay the twenty percent towards the parts. Or once we get it, and I get this little name, I don't see anything. Not willing to not do it. Yeah. Okay. They might just be a heads up. Okay. Uh, the next up is the guardrails. Uh, so we're mobilizing uh, a contractor to come out and repair guardrails in a few places, uh, and like we're doing with like we've done with paving, uh, we might get a little bit more bang for the buck if we you know, spread that over two years, pay the deposit for the job in one year, and then the completion in the next year. Uh, so that's our, our current proposal for guardrails because it does come out to you know about twice the regular budget. And I can pull that right on. Um, are any of these projects ones that are eligible that we have a grant for and are eligible for reimbursement under the grant? No, none of these. And I see at the end, I was going to ask the question about is it used use guardrail? It looks like it's all used material. Yeah, it's all uh, used material and some of it. I like for the powerhouse bridge, there's a section on the front that faces the 100 that's rusted out pretty bad. And I I wanted them to find a patina one to put back so it kind of goes with it. They said they had some. That's the one spot. Uh, on Upper French, there's two spots. There's one at the box culver, the original one. Uh, the guardrails are too low. They're only like 11 inches from the ground. Uh, and just past that, where the big culver is, uh, the guardrails are pretty in bad shape and they were installed when they were installed the wrong direction. So the impact zone, they faced the vehicle instead of facing away. <laughs> and the last spot was uh, Waterford Bridge. There's a spot there where people hit it a couple years ago and on the right side and damaged it. And that was one of the other ones that were apparently for it. You feel comfortable spending the whole current year's plus next year's budget on guardrails and not keeping a little bit back? With some unanticipated. The rest of the guardrails are fairly do like with my own and everything. Um, 
And if anyone usually gets them, like usually insurance from their insurance page form, these are ones that are, they would be a problem if they were inspected. Mm -hmm. So I, these addresses all the problems to get us all current and compliant. I feel comfortable with the decision because I, this wasn't, they're not coming to it right now anyway. They weren't coming out until June. Mm -hmm. This was just to get us in the schedule so I can say, yeah, we're good to go. Uh, any other questions? All right. Uh, our third plan purchase is for uh, the HP laptop and printer for the Historical Society. Uh, they're interested in in a purchase of about thirteen hundred dollars for a laptop and printer. Um. So I know that Duncan mentioned this, but. The Historical Society was one of the committees that is at like 80 some odd percent of spend for the year. Yep. So this is fit within their outstanding amount. Looks like they had a budget of 10,950 and they've spent 9,676. Um, and I know that only fair was at revenue too. I feel like the revenue was higher. If I remember correctly, maybe it's not the deal. I'm guessing. They're planning on taking this out of their equipment line item. That's what I have it targeted for. And they budgeted thirteen hundred, and incidentally, this uh, is for thirteen hundred as well. They budgeted just under eight thousand, and their revenue is over ten thousand, ten almost ten five. So yeah. their revenue is far beyond their expenses. That's cool. Okay. Great. So those are our 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 planned purchases. Um, the one recommendation I would have to go with the historical society's laptop and book printer is um, asking them to get a quote from our our vendor um, just to make sure that we're competitive with what they're they're looking at. Our vendor being the uh, tech, group. tech group. Thank you. Um, just for context, because this was what I was thinking about while we were talking about guardrails is we budgeted consistently over in guardrails and pretty consistently not spent at all or spent below guardrail budget over time. And the reason I was questioning that is to the point of, are we comfortable with spending year over year? The question to Jason. But it looks like we don't actually spend the budgeted amount year over year. So I can't imagine that it would be a problem. Okay, uh, do we want to, does anyone want to make a motion to approve? So moved. Okay, motion, any second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And Brian, if you want to suggest that to them, by all means, but I wouldn't think it a requirement, I'm sure. Okay, before we move on, Rosemary, did you talk about the delinquent taxes? No. That was one thing I wanted to. The star items I got starred are the ones I'd like to um, send to the attorney for collection. Okay. For start tax sale. So the ones with stars were not payment agreements. There's no. One that's got a payment agreement. Mm -hmm. 
And the one I got a question mark, I believe he is going to be under a FEMA mitigation project. Mm -hmm. So that may complicate things. Needs several years to link one. Okay. Expand on. It wasn't. Are we going to be looking for a right of way or something from? Aren't they using that for a floodway mitigation, mitigation project? Grant to purchase the land and then turn it over to the town to keep it out of the flood zone, wasn't it? I don't, I don't actually have a copy of this report, so I'm not sure which one you're looking at. Blackbridge. Yes, that so is a good description of the, yeah. the project. So would, uh, is, is it likely that might be part of an agreement with him to forgive the taxes or I don't know. I'm not I'm not sure what are you just raising it because it's I don't want could to be a sensitive it. subject. <laughs> or, All right. Okay. And just for further clarification, you're um identifying items that are above five hundred dollars looks like with your over year balances or is it just these are the ones that are lower balances are with land. So they're not mobile homes. I gotcha. Okay. Has there been any discussion with Black Ridge regarding taxes have not come up in our discussions about the using it as floodplain preservation? So he has so far has not asked for tax forgiveness as a condition of participating. I don't think we should have this conversation right now, actually, because uh, I think we should be careful about potential future negotiation. Yeah, I'm just trying to uh, have a better understanding of whether or not we should send yeah, I understand. to Rosemary's point. We have to decide whether all the ones identified are sent forward or not. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. Well, what's everyone thinking? I hear you. Um, do you need more clarification, Duncan? <laughs> uh, well, all things considered, I would say that we should uh and the you know accept the list that Rosemary prepared and deal with the aftermath if there is any. Uh so starred people starred properties as well as question mark. What were the question marks? Um, just that one. Just that one. Oh, okay. Well maybe we should change that to a Asterisk <laughs> and send them. I, I guess my mo I would move that we send all of the marked items on this list for further action. As long as there's not a payment agreement. I'm assuming because technically the payment agreement is marked on the second page. There's no asterisk in front of though. Yeah. But we can't we can't send it if there's been here. So should, yeah. he's been, that's what I'm saying. He's been I'm just making saying. his payments. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're moving that? Yes. And do you want to do a second? I would second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Did you need anything else, Rosemary? In this current tax, it's just, just for our edification. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Next up, recreation committee appointment. All right. We have two individuals recommended for the uh, recreation committee, Lisa Cruz and Casey Adams. Okay. What was the second one? Casey Adams. And they have been interviewed. And they met with the rec committee. They've both been attending meetings 
for some time pretty regularly. Okay. I make a motion to appoint both of them. Okay. Okay. We have a motion to second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Okay. Uh, new items, new project, Senator Sanders. Um, oh. Talk to you about that. Oh, okay. Thank you. Senator Sanders. Yeah, so I um maybe Brian's already aware of this, but um I did receive an email today from the Senator Sanders office indicating that they are looking for proposals for innovative projects that benefit Vermont communities. Um I'm just gonna throw this out that Brian had forwarded an email that he had received from a downtown business owner. Um, I actually went and visited that person mm -hmm. um, and talked with her. And it, it occurred to me at the time that it would be, I, I think there's a hole in funding opportunities that maybe Johnson Works could help with, um, or maybe we could help with, but if there was the possibility of having a small pot of money or a revolving loan fund that didn't have a lot of restrictions associated with it to help small business owners either weather bad times or get started or so it's just it's an idea or a thought for a, a project my my basic motivation for raising this is i think we should put something in um, as a as a proposed project yeah. uh just to clarify what you're saying is you're saying that we should submit submit to this innovation project and separately also consider funds for small business not necessarily i mean the the um the idea of a revolving loan fund or a uh, some sort of fund to help businesses could be the project that we submit that that could be the proposal that gets submitted I'm not wed to the idea, but I think that we should think of something to submit um, as a proposal. Can you say when the deadline is? Uh, uh, please fill out appropriations request application here. Um, you can click on it. By 5 p.m. March 10th, 2023. Not long. No, it's not long. That's now. Usually, these kind of things, you're more competitive if you got something that's shelf ready. And I, I was trying to rattle my brain here is anything that we have that is even shelf ready. And I can't think of a project. And yeah, this I I normally I would say you're absolutely correct. I would this one I think is a little bit different uh, because they're looking for projects that might be innovative and benefit Vermont communities. Um, I, I I don't know. I mean, I I think if we had if we had a shop ready engineering product, yes, that would probably rank pretty high. I, I mainly wanted to bring it to everybody's attention. It's a funding opportunity. We're probably not likely to get funded, but we definitely won't if we don't put in, right? Well, it's certainly something that we should have in mind for next year. You know, because Bernie's going to be chair of that committee, I would think. Yeah, I expect we'll get the same kind of notice. Same kind so, have you seen anything on it yet, Brian? If I, it may have come in, um, and you said you got it this afternoon. I got it this afternoon. Yeah, it yeah. may have come in, and it might be in my email that's yet to be responded. But you haven't to. seen advance notice of it, like no. you know, no, yeah. nothing from the office saying there's an opportunity coming up. Or... No, I didn't get anything in advance of it. It says past projects have had a significant impact across a wide range of issues, many long neglected 
including child care, sustainable energy, dental care, housing, and wastewater infrastructure. I didn't hear you, Mark. I was just wondering, hey, those don't sound like innovative things. Housing, wastewater, I was thinking something. The ones that get accepted will bring essential benefits to your communities. No um, parameters on amount stuffing either? No, um, what what it does say is we'd like to fund all of these. Uh, in reality, very few will be funded. Um, so you know, I mean, it's it's he's on the appropriations committee, so he's looking at projects from Vermont, but there's going to be projects submitted from all fifty states. Um, I just went to his website, by the way, for this for this program. And he works. Um, but I mean, it's not going to hurt us in anything. No. And he's in a huge position of power, not like what Lady had, but that way he basically funded the state of Vermont. Well, the entire Main Street project was an earmark. Yeah. <clears throat> Earmarks are bad. You're not calling. Okay, so, so um, we have a select board meeting right before town meeting day. Coincidentally, simply because town meeting day is late, um, maybe we could think of ideas and draft something. If you have an idea to submit, draft something, bring it to our March six, make sure it's on the agenda, uh, and we'll submit it. What the heck, why not? Yeah, and you know maybe Johnson Works would have some ideas too. You know things that might be useful. Wait, I think we can talk about that and see if there's something we can put together for. A so they didn't look very receptive to that idea, which implies to me that they're swamped. Uh, but I mean, I think we. I would like to see. I would like to be able to read the agenda and I'm sure we could. It's on, it's on his website. Yeah. Just innovative projects under standard website. Yeah. Okay, so we'll add it to March 6th. Brian, do you have that? Yep. Yeah. Um, next up, letter of request of support for new apartment construction. So, we have a request from uh, Andy Mink, who's putting together a project. Uh, sorry, what's the address? 93 Riverview Drive. Uh, at 93 Riverview Drive, and the project is uh, uh, it may be eligible for the Community Recovery and Revitalization Program. Um, and one of the requirements for that is a is community support shown by a letter of support from the selection. Are these supposed to be affordable or? If we get the grant, if I can speak on it, if we get the, if we get the grant, then 20% of the units are affordable, like they're gonna, um, there's an income limit on that for 15 years if the grant's used for it. So that would mean two of the apartments are going to be, you know, rent controlled basically for 15 years. Twenty percent of nine is two. How many is how many yeah, total units? Right now, the initial part of the project is um, is one nine unit building. At this point, I, I put in an application for the water and sewer permit for that building. Um, and I was, I didn't know if and how was it, I could be able to get that approved or not. Uh, we don't do water and sewer, though, with the- That's the, the village. Okay, so anyway, um, so yeah, and basically the community, um, if you're not familiar with the, 
the program. It's a community revitalization and re uh, development grant, and they've got basically, I think, $40 million that um, can be allocated to all kinds of different stuff um, and affordable housing is one of them. Um, we bought the property a couple of years ago, um, and it was in the middle of COVID, and it was a pretty distressed uh, multi-family property up there. There's three three apartment buildings, 20 units. Um, and it's been a lot of work over the last couple of years to get um, some people that shouldn't have been up there down the road. Um, right after we took it over, there was somebody that got taken out of there with uh, a lot of fentanyl and stuff, which I was happy that that happened. Um, you know, there's been other incidences um, in that area around Railroad Street, at the end of Railroad Street. Um, and I think it's 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 come a long way in the last 18 months, and I think that a new building up there would um, well, would be a good start um, to be able to clean it up a little bit and have a little bit better lighting and fencing and, and making it more attractive um, uh, apartment complex up there. Um, and the challenge with it and why I'm trying to get the grant is that uh, construction is very expensive. Um, the Act 250 process, if you if you go through it, is very expensive. Um, and so the nine units is to the limit of the Act 250 stuff. Um, the, and obviously the multifamily, the apartments all kind of comes down to income versus expenses. So the construction cost in Burlington or Montpelier or anywhere in the state is going to be the same as Johnson, but our market rents are considerably lower than they get in Chittenden County. They might be getting 16 or 1800 for a one bedroom apartment, whereas here we're not really over a thousand yet. Um, a lot of the units we have up there right now that are existing are, are with the utilities around seven or 800 basically. Um, and so this grant is gonna be 20% of the total cost of the building, um, which is gonna keep the mortgage payment down, which is gonna make it still profitable to build it hopefully. Um, and so that's why, uh, and uh, that's why I'm looking for the letter of support to hopefully get some of the grant money to help with the construction. And uh, otherwise, I think if that 20% isn't there, um, the numbers get really tight. You know, we're not getting, it's gonna be nine one bedroom units. And with what I know the construction costs are gonna be, um, you know, it gets to the point, I'm also gonna have to refinance the property in order to get some of the equity and, and uh, you know, that shape with the rates going up for the bank loans and everything else, it all just comes down to the dollars and cents. So um, that's for the initial part of it. And then um, I had another, I do have more conceptual plans for it further down the line. Um, it's, um, but part of that would probably rely on, I had a question about the code form zoning. If anyone is considered, that's what that other map is for that I had passed out. Um, that zoning map or the river, the this parcel is not included in any of that zoning, but we are included in the quarter mile designation around our downtown, which um, which makes us eligible to be a neighborhood development property with the state. Um, and if we did that, we could create a priority housing project which would allow us to build up to 49 additional units there without having to go through the Act 250 process. Um, and that would make that project, if we did build additional buildings after that, um, would make it a lot more likely to happen and have you know continued capital investment in the area and the property. Um, but getting off the phone with the guy from the state today, we would need the designation of one of those zoning districts in order to be eligible to be a priority housing project. Um, and there's there's quite a bit to it, but that would also possibly be, be eligible for grants and all that stuff as well. 
And I think that I think that part of the issue with um, that the town's up against in the state, I just think that the there needs to be some new construction. I think that that particular apartment complex right now is just small enough where it can kind of lead to some trouble. Or it's not. I'd like to see it paved and well lit and have fences around it, have new buildings and be very clean and have it be a lot more self-policing in that standpoint. You know, you go up there now at night and it's, it's kind of dark and there's the woods around and, you know, the last guy that was dealing up there, apparently there's people walking out of the woods up to his back window and, you know, doing it that way. And, you know, it's all the stuff that we need to do what we can to deter um, up there and, and just in town in general. I think there's a lot of, I think it's the spot for more development as far as the parcel goes. It's kind of up on its own. It's flat. It's close to the village center. It's it's walking distance to, you know, the, the, the stores and, and really everything that the, the state has been listing out in its uh, priority housing stuff. So. So what do you what does the board think? Is it is it is this twenty percent? Is it something did you give back to the sale property? No, from what I understand, um, it's a grant, and I, as long as it, totally it I think the the property might remain be pulled into that affordability. But from what I've seen about the affordable rents and what I'm planning on charging anyway, it's, most of it's probably going to be affordable. I mean, now, are you? Who are your other partners in this? My wife. Okay. Yeah. So it's definitely outside of the form based code zone. Yeah. And there's really, there's just kind of two parts. There's the the letter of support for the nine unit construction, uh, which is kind of immediate. And then Andy also has a request about expanding the uh, zoning district to include that property. And if we do that, he becomes eligible for additional money to construct more units after the nine units. So expanding the, the zone is a different conversation than we have on our agenda tonight, first Correct. of all. And secondly, it sounds like it's a bigger conversation period. Yes. Um, but heard, recognizing the request. Um, for the letter of support for the nine units, I think we should focus on the nine units, unless there are other questions about. <laughs> Did you make sure that none of this area falls within that cemetery? I, that cemetery. cemetery. I think it's outside. It's, that we've spent, it's spent many hours talking about. I don't believe that it does, but I. Can't say that I'm made. We want to make sure it's sure. outside of that. If they're going to be doing construction. Yeah, we can double check that. I don't think it is. I think you're right. I think it's beyond, but it's close. Yeah, I, I think it is also, but I didn't actually. It was all part of the it. same parcel at one point in time. Right. So the discussion we're talking about is the Parker and Stearns property. Yeah. Um, or the old Parker and Stearns property has an uh, old cemetery on the right hand. If you're going to Old Mill Park, Old Mill Park on the right hand side of the road is an old cemetery. Yeah, there's if you go up and you're facing them over the bridge and you're facing the Parker and Stearns buildings, the Riverview, there's like a big hill that separates it. It's all full of pine, old pasture pine that runs up through there. Um, and kind of separates the whole thing. Riverview's kind of down above the river, you know, up on its own little hill and flat spot up there. Well, these are unmarked. Yeah. It's but not like a, it's not a cave. If, I would just say if the cemetery's there, there's a pretty big hill that's right there in Bank um, that I don't think it would be connected there as far as, far as I know. But, yeah. Okay. And uh, Andy, just for clarification purposes, the, this uh, grant program would not entail renovations to the other existing units. This would be to build 
a standalone. Yeah, that's good. The, the grant would be for that. Yeah, okay. it would be that. Um, we've used we've utilized some other state programs for some work to the existing buildings as it is. You know, I've done a lot of work there in the last eighteen months, um, and um, well, I'm paying mostly, but. Um, like we had the we had people on the emergency rental program and we were able to submit for um you know some electrical upgrades and stuff like that had these old 60s uh electrical panels that were really dangerous we couldn't have insurance on the property because of them and they were able to cover some of that which helped out a lot um there was a lot of people that you know there was a, a a reasonable percentage of the people up there utilized that program as well i think it helped Get them through. I know it helped us get through a lot of the uh, the the bills and everything that was going on up there. So we've been coming, we've been getting pretty familiar with the state uh, system process, and you know I've been reading up quite a bit on on all this stuff and just knowing all parts of it. There's uh, um, there's a reason why there's not a lot of new construction that's going on in Johnson. Um, and, and in rural areas, and that's why all the development is going on in Chittenden County and, you know, and Morrisville to a certain extent, um, you know, it's, uh, I think it's needed, though. Every time I list an apartment, there's a half a dozen or more people that are, that are trying to fill it up, you know, and it's been all over the news and stuff, so I just think that the grant's kind of needed because, uh, it's a lot of money to build those buildings. And, um, so do we want to provide a letter of support or do we not? I, I make a motion to provide a letter of support contingent upon the cemetery boundaries. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Oh, second. Would would the letter of support be along the lines? It's similar to this. That's what I was thinking. I'm guessing that's what you're looking for is something similar to what the, yeah yeah it's LTPC. Just the, yeah as yeah. part of the application just something like that so you guys think it's a good addition to the town to the area and that. Eric would, would your motion be to have Brian draft and send or have Brian draft and death sign and send or what your, your um, specifics yeah Give me an option. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> yeah. um, if if you want to draft and send, I'm not. I don't have a problem with it. I didn't specify. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Do you want to make a friendly amendment? Or are you suggesting one? Um, I'm I'm okay with Brian drafting and sending it. Um, okay. Okay. All those in all those oh, in favor? We want to vote and get it. All those in favor? I, I, so the part about Brian drafting and sending it in the motion, or are you just agreeing outside of the motion that that's what will happen? Um, I was making a friendly amendment, and we didn't we didn't really discuss whether or not you were accepting of the friendly amendment. I would accept that as a friendly amendment. Okay. But now you want to vote <laughs> again. Okay. Votes. I'm abstaining. You're abstaining. I. I. Okay, uh, Brian, please proceed. And I just have, sorry, one more question. Uh, who, who would be a good person to uh, begin the discussion of the code form uh, zoning extension for the property? Um, you can talk with Brian about what explicitly you're looking for, and we would need to have it as part of our agenda. We will be forming a new board after town meeting, so yeah. Uh, it, We'll definitely not see light before then, and it would be up to the next board in terms of prioritization to get on their agenda. Okay, thank you. Yep, planning commission should probably. Oh, yeah, I think That's they have, have to better have... start actually. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going to scratch you. I said not Brian. Instead, uh, Brian can send contact information for Paul uh, <clears throat> Gordon, who is the planning commission chair. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. No, it's certainly not. It's not on Oh, yeah, it's not Townland. Right. Okay, next item Microsoft license agreement. All right, so the 
Microsoft new commerce experience license agreement. So what this is, is we, if we basically pre-buy a year's worth of uh, clients for our Microsoft products, we get a discount on them. Um, it allows us to change licenses. So if we have, um, well, for example, we're signing this now and we're going to have a new board after town meeting day, we can change a license uh, from a board member who's no longer on to change their email to license for whoever a new board member is. Um, that also works for our office staff. Um, Are you talking about us self-administering this? Is that what you mean by us changing a license? Uh, no, we go through the tech group for that too. Okay. Um, So we can we can move licenses around. So it's not that we have to buy an, uh, an entirely new license when we have a new person coming on board, either as an employee or as one of our volunteers uh, serving on select board trustees or or planning commission, um, who we, we regularly give email addresses to. But it does mean that we would not be able to reduce the number of licenses that we have. So we can add more, we can change who they're assigned to, but we can't reduce them uh, if we're going to get uh, get this discount. It's, uh, it will cost us an additional 20% if we choose to go with a... Uh, Is this a split cost in the village? Yes. I make a motion that we uh, authorize Brian to get the annual Agreement. Yep. With uh, Microsoft. For the tech group. Or the tech group. Yeah, tech group administers our licenses for us. So we there's nothing in here about cost. I know. What is the cost? I think the same thing. It is. Five dollars a month for email addresses, and I don't know what it is off the top of my head for folks that have a full Microsoft Office license suite. Um, it is no change in cost to what we had previously, but I, I don't remember what our licenses break out of our total tech group cost. So, what are we actually saving? We're not saving anything. If we you said if we purchase in advance, we save. If we uh, it's. More correct to say that if we don't purchase in advance, it costs more. We purchased in advance last year uh, and participated in this program. So we have to either continue to participate or pay an additional fee. Would it be beneficial to see the contract? If it would, I would draw my motion. I would like to know more. When is this due? Uh, begins March 1st. Well, I guess we don't have much of a choice in the matter. Let's do something else. Is Tech Group the only, is this anything they, what else can they do for us? They do everything. Is this the contract that we have that they do everything for us? This is part of it. This is one of the, we have the contract with them where they provide our services and they manage our licenses for us. Part of them managing our licenses for us is this offer where we can, they will manage our licenses, whether we sign or whether we, we adopt the NCE license agreement or not. Um, if we, we currently, for the last year, we've been participating in this agreement. And it has to be renewed yearly. Um, if we choose to not renew it, they'll still manage our licenses for us. We'll still have the same number of licenses. Um, and it will just cost us 20% more. 
but we would have the ability to remove licenses. Uh, okay, so 20% more if we don't do this. Yes. We, we have a motion. Is anyone interested in seconding or shall we withdraw? Well, given the fact that we <laughs> Mark's press is right around the corner, I guess I'll second it. Uh, okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have it. Um, we need to put this on the list, the annual list, not for February, for January, definitely January. Uh, okay, next up, review and update road classifications. All right, uh, two parts to this. Uh, you know this is something that Evan had an interest in, but I'm gonna go over a little bit about uh, classification of roads and reclassification of roads. Um, if there's a there's some reasons that we should consider reclassification, but right now, basically there, there are of the road classes, this, we received funds for uh, class one, two, and three roads. We have no class one roads. Um, the funds we receive from those roads ha has to go towards road maintenance. We make reports to the state showing that we've demonstrated demonstrating that we're spending that money on on, on road maintenance. Um, to change the classification of a road, the select board needs to hold a hearing, invite all of the um, affected, all, all of the landowners whose properties connect to the affected road segments and uh, hold a hearing on it, just determine whether it's part of the public good to change that road classification or not, and if it meets the state requirements. Uh, the state requirements are really only matter for class one and class two roads. Uh, class two roads are roads that connect communities, though it would have to be a road that is used to go from one town to another town. I'm just gonna stop you right here. Yep. And I'm gonna stop you because if we have to hold a meeting specifically inviting the people impacted by any change we propose. I don't think we should be having this conversation as our second to last meeting of this board. Knowing a new board is going to hear, need to hear all of the same things and make decisions. I'm just wondering how useful it is for us to spend our energy on this right now. This this is not reclassifying a road. This is an action. This is trying to codify an action that was taken in 1990. Okay, okay. but that's parts, not what but, Brian just said. But the I'll be I'll briefly summarize my first point. The class four roads historically have had very little, we don't receive any money for them, and the maintenance requirements on them has traditionally been very little. They are not required to be passable at all times of year. So we, we do not have to do very much maintenance on them at all. Uh, we're responsible for water, and that's about it. Now, with the municipal road general permit, the amount of maintenance that we have to do on class four roads is increasing. It is a good idea for us to look at and consider reclassifying hydrologically connected road segments on class four roads that we do not use and that aren't used by the general public. Does that mean the ATVs aren't used? We can change a class four road to a legal trail, which retains our legal right of way over that span without it being a road anymore. So it changes our maintenance requirements. It eliminates our maintenance requirements entirely, but it still is a public trail. So ATVs could use it. Um, I, I'd like to suggest that we deal with, I, I totally understand what you're saying and why you're saying it, 
but I think they're two different issues. I think there, there are, are two different issues. I think we should take them one at a time. Yeah. And are two different issues listed here, or is one issue listed here? The immediate issue is reclass is submitting a new certificate of mileage with the documentation from 1990 indicating that it should have been reclassified from class four to class three in 1990, but for some reason one is not. Yeah. So the action that the board needs to consider tonight is we have to submit our certificate of highway mileage. This is our annual certificate. We only get one opportunity a year to make changes to our road mileage. Um, we have the opportunity this year to correct a mistake that we found in classification of a different class four road, uh, town highway number 44, which is Lenway Lane. <laughs> um, and correcting that, that what that did go through the process of holding a hearing, holding multiple hearings, hearing from the public, visiting the road, inspecting it, determining if there was a public good, and certifying that the road would be changed to a class three. Um, that was not recorded and submitted to the state. So we have the opportunity to fix that. Have we been claiming the mileage? No. Have we been what? Claiming the mileage since 90. We haven't been claiming We the haven't mileage. gotten a nickel for it since 1990, apparently. Yeah. Like, who was on the sideboard then? Right there, right in front of you. That's this document. For me. Before Eric. Your name is in the document, though, if you turn to page two. Because you submitted a bid for new stairs in the back door of the old gym. You also asked about your driveway at 19. Important call. So, my sister. I so have the point seven eight is the Len Wayne. Yes. Okay. And that's the only change from previous year? It is. And on uh, on the draft certificate of mileage, you're adding point seven eight. I'm removing point seven eight from our class four mileage and adding yeah. point seven eight to our class to three mileage. Yeah. And I have just an odd question. How come it says district six? Aren't we in district eight? I thought we were in District 8 too, but uh, we're District 6. Mm -hmm. We've got redraw. Where is it? I, I can double check the districts if we like. Well, I've been through the minutes and looked at the certificate of mileage. It looks to me like everything was properly done. The step that wasn't done was adding it to the certificate of mileage back in 1990 and from that point on it just got messed okay. so uh, i would move to submit the certificate of highway mileage as brian has indicated adding 0.78 to our class three subtracting it from our class four and submitting this documentation with that as all attached documentation with that. Yeah. Because there's two different documents. I there. second that motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I am making a correction from District 6 to District 8. Will you please just, I know it's a small thing and it seems dumb, but will you please have somebody check the map? Sure. Since this will be on record and we'll be probably using the same thing for a while. And we, we have to sign this, don't we? Yes. yes. So is, does awesome. somebody have a copy we can sign? I'll sign my copy. Let me check the map right now. Okay. And change the six to an eight. You think it really is an eight? It is. Yeah. We just looked it up. The pins were loose on the pocket loader too in 1990. <laughs> 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 oh, Jason, you were leaving. Why are you still here? <laughs> Oh, they're just napping. They're just napping. <laughs> My, uh, yeah. Okay, that's it. All right. You probably can't go to sleep. <laughs> yes. So, if we while that's going around, place. do you want me to start on the next one? Yes, please. Okay. Um, um, heating options for the lower storage building. 
uh, the village is proposing to uh, turn off the heat in the lower storage building. Um, I, I've approached uh, rec and public work, um, and they don't, neither, and neither group believes that there's going to be any adverse impact in um, removing the heat that will be, uh, we should be fine for both of those. Uh, I believe there's a question about uh, kind of preserving the existing radiant heating system. Uh, the village's proposal is to fill the radiant heating system with uh, glycol or an antifreeze um, to keep it so it could be returned to operation at some point in the future, so desired. So why are we doing uh, the building? If, if we're going to heat the building, we should invest a uh, significant amount of money in repairing damage done to the building by uh, raccoons uh, that have done a lot of damage to the insulation of the building. Uh, it was warm in there. They wanted to get in. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the building doesn't see a lot of regular use. So it, it leaving, turning the heat back on and leaving it on is a considerable expense. Uh, about seven thousand dollars a year for little benefit all our equipment will start uh we're gonna have to use a block heater uh and they recommend not using the block heater all the time so it's gonna be something that they're the all of our equipment will start there could be a morning sometime with an unexpected emergency if we didn't plug the block heater in that it takes longer to start than typical What's what, what equipment is in there? Not the trucks. Not the trucks. The greater yeah, the and the, trucks. I know. The greater and like the trucks. Yeah. Yeah. But, but chances are, Jason, that um, when it's sub zero, we're not going to need the backup. That's when the village would need it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. 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 But that's when I, I reached out to no cat and I the back of them like to start very in very good weather. Dust it doesn't like to start no. and they get the plugging in so they, they also said you can't leave the plugged in because the bad to plug in non stop every day. Is there a block meter on it right now? Yeah. And the other thing that me and Eric talked about a little bit was when I was asked about our stuff being in there. I wasn't super worried about it, but the integrity of our slabs, the only thing that would worry me being heated for so long is we stop heating it. What would happen? You got a rack. That's the only thing I wanted to go on record saying that. I personally think heating it to some minimal heat, 40 degrees. Would not be that expensive. I went down there and look at the grader, and it was seventy four in there, or some ungodly one. Picture uh, that's going to cost money heating it seventy four degrees. But if it was down at something just to keep above freezing, so you can start tractors, graders, and I think it's better for the equipment too. But I, I don't. Know, I, I, I'm struggling to see a reason. Why we would eliminate the heat? I think, regardless of whether you got heat or not, there's repairs that need to be done, and the raccoons are still there, right? Yeah, he's got one. Got three and three. one. Stump. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody would like a nice stump out, let me know. It's a little smelly, but you know, no, dude. Um, there's skunks or raccoons. Oh, they uh, love. Don't follow the raccoon and they were all. Oh my God, what a disaster. It's hilarious. That, that needs to be taken care of. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, mean, I think that should be taken care of regardless because yeah. whether it's there's heat in there or not, they're yeah. going to. Yeah, we're, we are taking care of the animal, infil animal infiltration <laughs> and we've made a number of repairs to the outside of the building to try and stop it and they. They just found a new way. Yeah. But they're going to. 
this is uh, they just got done breeding about a month ago. The raccoons, the females are looking for places to set up to in order to birth within several weeks. So they're looking for nice warm places. They're semi hibernating still. They're still like we'll move for a while and then we'll come out and scurry around. So right now that's this is the prime time that they just start getting into everywhere. And we had last year I, I trapped some and we eliminated their access hole and then again they just found a way. because uh, it's it's a nice it's a big building. It's got all that sheet rock. It's got all that insulation. It's got all those air spaces between all that, and it's just you know a nice. And they've been able to get in before. And it's quiet. It's not quiet. Yeah, yeah. It's never anything. <laughs> and there's toilets during gathering. Yeah. What do we typically keep that building heated at? Usually it's 55. We had it at 74 because the surf pro had uh, their fans and everything in there. And they wanted it up to dry it out. Uh, okay. We had to keep the greater warm. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they go blanking on <laughs> It's got automatic heat of dispenser. <laughs> I'm a little uncomfortable having this discussion separate from the trustees. Yeah. I mean, it's a jointly owned building. I, I don't I don't think we should. I think it's a good point. It seems yeah, like a good, good joint topic. meeting discussion. Yeah. And, you know, Millhouse, Millhouse is another one. <clears throat> Okay, I, I like that idea. I agree. I think this is joint meeting worthy. I mean, I hate that. I like the air on the side of joint meetings. If we're yeah, I know. Yeah, let's have another meeting. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to propose that we move. So we're going to move off this topic, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm just going to pro propose that we jump to the monthly discussion because we have Tyler on the phone. Yeah, and that's up next, David. Uh, Millhouse was, but we'll we'll bump Millhouse. We'll put Millhouse behind it. That means way Yeah. Yeah. All right. So at our at a January meeting, we had the board had expressed an interest in um, kind of revisiting the uh, proposal from Mumley Engineering. Um, and had a couple requests that we communicated to, to Tyler and his team, and he has issued a response, um, you know, which updates the scope of services, cost estimate, and and, and all of our requests. Um, it goes into a lot of detail about one of our requests uh, that I thought that wasn't Part of the proposal but we had asked for more detail about was the things that were not we wanted a better understanding of what the lay of land was and the things that were being excluded or not covered by this proposal and i i think they did a very good job of laying out everything that uh, that's not going to be covered that still we still might need in the future yeah um Are there, you had an opportunity to read it. Are, are there any questions? I just, I just wanted to point out that if anybody doesn't have them or needs copies of them, I, I asked Brian and Lydia to print out copies for me of the original plans, the original um, proposal and final report and the Yellowwood study. So, I think those are good documents to for everybody to have. I think I think Tyler did a great job of responding to the um, uh, the requests that we submitted for additional information and for the clarification on the scope. And I would certainly be prepared to make a motion on it. Go ahead. I was I was just not my favorite. I saw your hand go up in front of my eye. It's okay. Pass my vision test. One question I would I would have, I guess, of the board though, is in these in the three sheets that we have, one is existing conditions, 
One is a sheet that shows an entirely commercial park, and the other one has an option that would lend itself to um, smaller uh, commercial units or even residential development um, in the lower part. Is there any reason that we would want to change those two basic concepts? We're going to have to go with one of them for submission to X to 50, I think, I would say. So I guess, uh, you know, at some, uh, we may not have to make this decision tonight, but at some point, we're probably going to have to make a decision whether we want the one that has the potential for small commercial or residential development or the one that is all industrial commercial. Um, I like the idea personally of diversity. That I don't think that's what I've seen. You want to see them? Diversifying, thank you. That's the reason why I'm afraid we'd like to have the same one. Diversifying the way we approach anything that is about. It gives us more options. It gives us more options and it's a better safeguard. In worst case scenario, if if it's if we can't fill those, we can turn it into one big lot. Yeah. Um, do we have questions on the proposal? I like the proposal too. I think it's really thorough. I appreciate even the out of scope items having some costs as associated with them. That's extremely helpful. Yeah, for the definition too. I think you did it. I, I like the proposal. So, what would your motion be to defend it? My motion would be to, um, I, I think my motion would be. To spend the thirty-four five um, and the additional twelve for the survey, um, and to use ARPA funds to uh, to pay for it. So, it's, so it would be to accept the proposal uh, thirty-four five plus twelve for the survey, and to use ARPA funds to pay for it. And I would second the motion. Of, because when you go before an Act 250, they may come up with additional things that may have to be done. I'm assuming, but this would get us a lot closer to that and where we are. Yeah, we'll get an application in. Yeah. Can I um make a, co a couple of comments, please? Tyler Mumley, Mumley Engineering. Uh, sorry I couldn't be there in person tonight. Um, just. Just put the girls down to bed. So, uh, calling from the house. <clears throat> um, regarding the you know the residential versus commercial, and you know the smaller lots versus maybe one bigger lot, <clears throat> you know it doesn't make it doesn't make a huge difference uh, with regard to like engineering and design and wastewater and stormwater. Those are all things we have to kind of make assumptions about with regard to the development of the lot itself, anyways. But Act Two Fifty, they'll want you. They'll want you to to have a specific plan and uh specific uses defined you know so we do have to come to a decision on on that before we submit an application and you know the way that Act 50 works is you know if, if you want to if you want to change the plan then you got to go back and get get permission to change it they like to have control every over every uh inch and cranny of the the project so just let's we'll just keep that in mind Tyler, do you think it would make a significant difference um, in, I think the th the biggest thing that I can think of that might have a major cost impact would be traffic impact. Do you think the design for the smaller lots versus one big lot would tip it over into uh, traffic improvements needed at the intersection? I don't think so. You know, and we can... When we're going through this process, we can assume, you know, smaller commercial lot, but also keep consideration for residential lots in our in the back of our brains and, and kind of consider it, um, you know, in-house and just make sure that something like that wouldn't tip the scales on any critical items. So we can, uh, I made a note of that and it's something we'll, we can work into the scope of work pretty easily. 
The other thing uh, regarding the Act 250 application, um, you know, specifically to the response to the excluded items, and there are uh, there are a few things that we um, have considered in the past. We have a good feeling about now, but we'll we'll want to nail down uh, right away um, just to make sure we're not going to run into a red flag with scope or costs later down the road um, in the world of Act 250. You know, that's that's deer wintering areas, that's wetland areas, that's prime agricultural soils impacts and, and mitigation uh, be trans with the, the potential for traffic study or intersection upgrades and things like that. So the way it is now, we, we, we feel we have a good understanding and a good um, degree of the scope of what we're going to go through, but those are things that we want to get ahead of early, just to just to flush it out um, and to make sure we don't hit, hit any roadblocks later. When we talk about spending this type, this amount of money with ARPA funds specifically, and we head down the road of grants, which we will certainly do, is there anything that would are any of these funds that we would spend in theory reimbursable through a grant or would we have to wait for the grant to spend? You know what I mean? I, I'm, I feel like I'm not very articulate all of a sudden tonight. But. I'm, I think I know what you mean. Could we spend the money now, then receive a grant in the future and use this to recoup? <laughs> yeah. um, it is unlikely enough that I'm comfortable saying no. Uh, I, I, that is extremely unlikely. It will make us more competitive when we go for grants if we can show community investment in a project. So it, it's not that us spending the money in advance is without... It'll, it'll get us the study and it'll make us more competitive to show you know that we've been investing in the project over multiple years, uh, that we've completed studies and we've done some work on our own. Okay, fair enough. Okay. On the land, that was investing over yep. the years. And, and it would, oh. um, if we had a set of plants, it would, I think funding, op, funding organizations would look more favorably on a proposal that actually had a set of plants. I, I think that's very likely. Our old plans were were old enough that we were the grant applications we were going for was final engineering and construction, um, which is a category, but uh, 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 going for just construction is a lot more competitive. Uh, and also, I mean, one of the reasons it is that we're a lot more likely to get it done within the time frame for the regular time frame of a grant if we go for final engineering and construction one of the reasons it's less competitive is that becomes a very open-ended how long will it take kind of project yeah but if we can go forward with you know we've got something in a, at act 250 we've got final engineering we've got design it's a much more competitive project how much should we spend in the old uh... Uh, we did receive it was what, what have we been doing on it? Well waiting for grants to take this next step. We the date has not been successful. And, and our commitment to the voters at some number of years ago was we were going to try not to spend a lot of taxpayers' money. We were trying to you know, go by the grants. Um, okay, so I'm sorry. Do we have a motion or were you going to suggest a motion? I can't remember. I made a motion and he said it. In a second that we're discussing. Okay. And when, will we, when would we want to cut this check? Okay. I'm up to the board, but I don't see any reason to wait. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Uh, when they're prepared That's probably yeah. a fair yeah. question, too. You know, yeah. Meaning, what, what, what he wants for money when? Yeah. <laughs> Is this something think, that you could I'll start? I'll take it all right? tomorrow in cash. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Florida. You <laughs> uh, one, and one other one other thing I just thought of. Um, a lot of the permit application fees are exempt, uh, but I, I think you're going to be on the hook for some of them. I, I think the stormwater application, um, and not a lot, but that's that's added funds that are going to be necessary above and beyond um, the thirty four and a half and the twelve thousand. Also, um, there's an expectation that there's going to be mitigation fees for impacts of prime agricultural soils, um, and the the original estimate was. In the high range of twenty five thousand, but that's going to have to be uh, confirmed with the Department of Agriculture based on actual expected impacts and also current uh, cost of offsite land mitigation. So that's just another price tag that's going to be on the table. Uh, that's something that I think might be able to be pushed off until construction starts, um, but that would be another uh, large big, big big ticket item. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take whatever 32, 5 plus 12 and spend that now. Hope we get more grant money like we did in the past. We move forward. Yes. Um, Tyler, I, I your mention of stormwater permitting made me think of something. Um, and I don't know if Brian's brought you up to speed on this, but we just signed an agreement with Vermont Electric Co-op and they are building a storm water system on their property. And we have a permit or permission to tie into that with our, I don't, I don't think it will handle the entire storm water uh, needs of the project, but it's possible that we could uh, tie into that, into their storm water system as an adjunct. Meaning that they, they're they're over designing it to accommodate some additional uh, correct impervious okay correct yeah uh, and great Brian, Brian can give you the details on on that and I'm sure he can come up with prints and plans for you yep cool excellent um okay so let's vote and then we'll have, oh Shane yeah I was just curious um, whether part of the scope of this work would be to uh, Kind of explore what Duncan was talking about, whether it's still going to be a like industrial park or whether it's going to be mixed purpose or whether there's new plans. Um, I think, you know, times have changed, play of land has changed since the plans were originally made, since, you know, to put an industrial park there. So maybe that, that's not the most feasible option anymore. So um, if that's part of the scope of the work, then I would be happy, but I, before you make a decision, it would probably be smart to know what you want to do with it. <laughs> so we, we'll have to do this. We'll have to support the items that are in this proposal. And one of those items will be submitting to the Act 250, and we will need to have a decision for that submission process, yes. And to your point, we'll need to decide between one of these two plans. I, I would say that Tyler has pretty much confirmed that we got to submit one plan. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess my question is, does approving this proposal lock us into one of those two plans? Or is it possible to explore other options at this point? My take on that would be no, that this is to update the study that was done um, and get us to a point where we can submit an active 50 application for a specific proposal. So I, I personally don't have any interest in looking into housing or some other um, some other configuration. Um, I, I think my own personal opinion is the voters purchased the property based on it being used based on these original plans. And if we're gonna change that, I would be very uncomfortable just as an individual member um, without talking to the voters <laughs> the reality is there's going to have to be decisions all along the way and we need to get updated plans so that we're informed to make decisions and this is the first step in doing that i could add to that and just say that you know the proposal is based on essentially updating the the existing plans that you know you're referencing there and not not revisiting any total revamp 
Um, with that said, if that's something that the town really wanted to do, then, you know, happy to happy to go down that road. I, I assume that there'd be some potential tweaks here and there, um, but nothing super major um, and that it would be, again, more of a revamp of, of the plans that we have in place already to just get them up to snuff with current codes and, and such. And, um, you know, happy to have a happy to have a, a meeting with you all where we maybe go over those plans in a little bit more detail just to make sure there aren't any, again, tweaks or, or minor changes that could or should be made. But um, yeah, that the proposal was based on just up, updating the plans essentially to get them ready for submittal and permitting. Okay, are you ready to vote? All those in favor? Aye. Okay, I have it. Thank you very much, Tyler. Um, so Thank Tyler you. did submit a, uh, an actual agreement. Yep. Um, okay. Does somebody have a copy of that? But uh, would would your motion, Eric, be to authorize Beth to sign that agreement on behalf of the board? Which one made motion? Should I make Should I make a separate motion? Yeah, separate authorizing. Motion, I'll make a separate motion authorizing Beth to um, execute the agreement with uh, Mumbai Engineering. I'll second that. All those in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. I have it, and Brian will need a copy that is clean. Yep, I'll get a, I'll, I'll get with Tyler. They've got a couple of things in here that he has to fill out. So okay. I'll get with Tyler, and we'll get one ready for a second. That will be good. All right. Okay. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you very much. I look forward to working with the town. Appreciate Thank it. You, Same. Have a good night. Take care. Bye. Okay. Old Mill House. Oh, uh, so I, I have two two issues with Old Mill House. One is sort of the same comment about the lower building um, with regard to uh, Eric's proposal to perhaps get out of any further obligations in there and and the food shelf expanding. Um, I, I think that's a conversation that we should be having with the trustees uh, at a joint meeting. Um, all so, of the above, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and then uh, the other one um, that I was a little concerned about was, uh, and I went back and looked at the minutes. Maybe the maybe the tape shows something different, but I I know that TG Beach um, talked about the Mill House at the last board meeting and the need to try and paint it. But there's been a couple front porch forum uh, front porch forum postings um, to actually solicit volunteers to go in there. I, I'm really concerned about that. Um, both Mark and I said at that meeting that lead paint is an issue on that building. Um, and if we get volunteers in there yeah. and they somehow get exposed to lead paint, um, we're in deep shit, excuse my language. Um, so I just, I just, I think maybe somebody should reach out to Gigi and say- On here. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Well, I I I don't think we want to uh, go down the road. Yeah, it's a jointly owned building. The town and village own it jointly. That's another question, um, you know, for a joint meeting, perhaps. Um, so I, I I'm I'm a little leery of um, soliciting a whole bunch of volunteers to go in and paint that building without giving it a little more. And just thought. just. One comment, if I could, I wasn't talking about the inside of the building. I wasn't talking about the outside of the building. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, but that's that's I I understand exactly what you're saying. Okay. Um, yeah. and uh, I respect your concerns. Well, if the inside of the building has Mark knows from from having apartments, if if there's lead paint used in the inside yeah, of the building, that building is a hazardous waste site for lead paint. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. So I, I, I think you know, you, you, there are even things that you need to do, oh. like wiping surfaces down and prepping and all that. So, Forty thousand we just spent on normally will be small compared to lead remediation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I just think we need to be uh, proceed a little bit cautiously on any proposal involving that building because there's so much lead paint. Right. Everywhere. Jason, yeah, please. Uh, my team was approached about maybe 
uh, helping out with some of this. And I wanted to get the board's take on how they felt. We can't have anybody do anything like that without a lead certification. I just want to make sure. I did actually reach out to the state and ask them if it was a you know, how, how to go about that, just an information gathering thing. And I forwarded to Brian the response that I got. And one of the uh, responses, the state writer was, if we did not disturb anything, we could paint over it. Um, I'm willing to stand back completely from any efforts to work on that space and just focus on my part of trying to move traffic from the rail trail to the village. Uh, we can hard stop my involvement right now. <laughs> because I understand I'm going to show you yeah. the building. I don't agree that it's a toxic place, but I've been there a number of times. Um, but anyway, that's just my opinion. Um, uh, we should let you know when we have a joint meeting. And it sounds like you're paying attention to what's happening anyway, which is awesome, by the way. Yeah. Um, so please attend the joint meeting. Yeah. I'd love to see something get done to the outside. I'd love that building to get painted. Um, but again, it's I don't think it's something that we can necessarily do just on our own because it is 50% owned by the village. So unfortunately, we got Okay. Uh, so we have joint we have a number of joint joint topics at this point around buildings. So it sounds like we have a joint meeting coming up. Let's <laughs> <Woo. laughs> No. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. Oh, no, moving away. Rail Trail Working Group update. All right. So we have a few people who have expressed interest so far. Uh, it is in, appearing in this week's News and Citizen. Uh, yeah, we're getting some interest in the working group. Uh, I gave you the letters from three people that we've received who are interested. Peggy, Allie, and Joey. Yep. That's great. Uh, although Joey is making a commitment for somebody from Johnson Works, and it may or may not be her. Yep. But Johnson Works, I went to their last meeting. They're they're very interested in in this as a topic. Um, so I was I didn't realize that this had been published in the News and Citizen yet. So it's good to have an update that we have letters, but we should have more, hopefully. Yep. I, I, I expect that we will be good. We'll get more. And I can repost on social media to kind of coincide with the news and citizen posting. Lovely. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. That's exciting people are. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and Gigi, were you throwing your name in too? Yeah, I definitely like Gigi. Oh, I'm sorry. Everything's blurry. If I don't, I can't see with my glasses. Actually, <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> um, I'm actually had applied to participate in the Walking College, which is um, a program that is focused, from what I gather from reading their brochures, on infrastructure safe walking paths. I thought that it would be relevant in terms of idea spots for having safe travel from the rail trail into the village. I thought that maybe this would be helpful. Um, I did speak with Brian about it. I would love to be a side member, but I don't want to overcommit because I've just also um, taken on being the uh, treasurer for Johnson Works, which I'm very excited about. Oh, cool. As well as I'm trying to open up my own shop. So I've, I would love to be on the periphery, but not necessarily um, member. Thank you for thinking about that. Fair enough. Okay, excellent. Good. Thanks for volunteering. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, I think that this walking college could offer some useful information for the village and town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so that was just a quick update. Yep. Anything more on that one? No, nothing really more to re report at this stage. I, uh, I have another spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Lamoy alarm. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. So, Plafkin Friday, everyone should go. Uh, strongly encourage it. This was a summer fun? 
if they're not semifinal yet. This is a playoff, second round of playoff is, I think, the quarterfinals on Friday, and then semis next week. Is there a select board meeting when they're playing? Mark, I can't wrap it up. <laughs> I've been really upset about it all week long, I have to tell you. Like, seriously, it's all I thought about all week long before I was working. Uh, okay, ready? Uh, economic development roundtable discussion. All right. So for the roundtable discussion, we have a draft agenda. I want to talk a little bit about that, and uh, then I'd like I'd like to move on to the next stage uh, of publishing a doodle poll to the participants we have so far to get a final date, uh, which would be late in April, um, and you know, going from there. Uh, the agenda topic that uh, I came up with with Pat over at the LEDC was uh, to focus our discussions around three areas, the industrial park, um, and we can, if we want to talk about it as a mixed use park, we can, I can call it something other than industrial park. Um, the rail trail and recreation related development and brownfields development. Um, we picked these three areas. The first one has, um, we think that there is some money behind that, but it also has good local investment and local support. Uh, the rail trail and recreation development is a nice mix of the two, that there is a lot of outdoor recreation funding out there, um, and it contributes, yeah, it can, can contribute uh, for first order to some types of businesses and has a secondary effect on a, a wider range of businesses. And the brownfield development is also, uh, we can demonstrate local investment with the uh, brownfield study that we had completed a few, well, the village had completed a few years ago. And uh, there's a lot of money going into brownfield redevelopment right now. So we think that these are three areas that we could develop uh, actions out of that we can follow up on uh, in the future. My concern isn't with the, I do have a concern, and my concern is not with the high level items. I agree that those are the right items. I very much worry about the sub bullets for each of those items, though, because of the attendees that we've invited to the discussion. The attendees that have, we've invited to the discussion. Like, I just don't see them playing into a brainstorming for actionable items. Maybe I'm wrong. And I don't see them narrowing down two or more plans to carry out. I can see them being interested in current status and understanding some of our challenges and why they haven't moved. I can understand them being interested in our vision. I can see them being interested in how they can help overcome some reasons for our stagnant or, you know what I mean, being stagnant. I just want to make sure that if we're inviting these people, who I think are really important people to invite, by the way, because they have an interest in growing Vermont and our region, um, that we need to be really careful that the conversation can involve them and make them interested in supporting us. Just my two cents. I think you're right. Um, people from state or federal departments, officers, you know, professionals, representation, they're going to want to hear what we have already decided the current state is, what we have decided our, the brainstorming's already happened. They don't want to participate in brainstorming. Right. They want to know what are your needs, what do you want to do and how can I help? Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. So maybe a different way to phrase the B bullet in all of these would be, I'd like to hear what resources they think they might be able to bring or we might be able to leverage in the conversation. You know, what 
does agency of commerce and community development and affairs do they have a specific grant program that we should be targeting um you know is there that's the level of of brainstorming i would like to see is with their expertise what do they think could be brought to the table to help us be successful I would like to know more than just money wise, but manpower wise, like how can they support small towns in terms of people? Mm -hmm. Because that's our that's ultimately the rural community's challenge. Doesn't matter what rural community you look at, you just don't have the people. And while we have them there, I, I have. Brian can elaborate on this too, but um, we have this wonderful rural loan fund that is so limited in how you can actually use the funds as to be almost useless, candidly. Um, it would be really nice if we could figure out a way to change some of those parameters at the state level to allow us to have greater access to loan some of that money out to jumpstart you know, the economy and businesses and, you know, again, that's, that's a fairly specific thing, but it's, for us, it's a big deal. I mean, it's, we've got this great pot of money, but you almost can't use it. Yeah. So I've, I'm eliminating the brainstorming and changing that to I don't know the exact phrasing, but something along the lines of what resources exist for this topic. Yeah, those can be those can be monetary or um, man manpower. You know, they can be human or monetary. Resources. That's true. I worry. I worry. You know, we should just say funds or people. We should just say it because when you say resources, it's very project manager y and you can interpret it however you however you'd like. Unless you say human resources. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> There's a little bit of conversation. But mm. like the people people power thing and the money availability, like those are two things that we very specifically need to call out around current status of the industrial park what our vision is and what our blockers are going to be <clears throat> as we, or what our blockers are as we see them. And that leads to how they can help. Like if we're really gonna be successful and we're really gonna to commit to economic development because our state is a aging state with um, not a great outlook when it comes to growth, we need your help in, with this. We need your help with bringing resources in because we don't have them, people and money in because we don't have it to help grow in these er in these three areas. Who are you, who are you talking about anyway? <laughs> we'll talk about all of us at this point. <laughs> I'm not getting younger. <laughs> yeah, the one the CNN anchor is talking about that. What about the the bullet three, instead of narrowing down to no more than two plans, assist with focus of, you know, a plan to move forward or some, something along that. I, I, I don't like the idea of narrowing it down to two plans. That that sounds like too goal oriented. And it doesn't sound like it's going to happen. It's no, I don't think it's going to happen. Anyway, let's get followed I agree. But I but I do think it, you know it's great to sit around and talk about all the potential resources. It would also be really nice to come up with a little bit of a focus on, you know. I, we can't. Yeah, but we have forward. to know our audience, and in this particular case, our audience is up here. Right. We're here. Our audience is here. Like we need to go to the audience level first, and then we can follow up with the next steps and drill down a little bit more. So you don't think that necessarily should be part of the focus of the roundtable? No, I strongly feel it should not. Because we want to keep them engaged. We want we want this group we're talking about, we want them to care about what we're talking about the whole time. 
that anyone is talking and we want them to want to do it again. You know what I mean? I do, I do. I, I, I could go either way on it, I think, um, because I think some good ideas could come out of that to assist us with focusing. Um, but I think if, if the general conversation has had them, uh, well, I guess what I worry about is it's going to be like a lot of things we do. We do it and then it gets, it goes nowhere. Well, maybe we <laughs> have the round table and then we have a lunch together or something. And then we spend the afternoon with a smaller group without the other folks to get some more actionable items. Yeah, it's been, the, the, the other thing I was a little worried about, I, I think I think the industrial park and the rail trail recreational development are great. I don't know that we have any specific brownfields projects and I don't know enough. I know there's a lot of money potentially coming down the pike, but we don't have a project. Um, so to me, this would be a discussion about funds that might be available that we could leverage for other purposes. But I, I, I don't know that there's a project, a Brownfields project that's identified that. I don't think there is one that's identified, uh, but this might be useful for, you know, a couple of our local property owners that would be, that have properties that might might be eligible for participation in, the, in a Brownfields program. Uh, to try and get redevelopment on those sites that was why I, I was thinking it was a good topic and i know the well county planning commission because i've talked with doug and i'm on the board um, they are trying to get their arms around the money that they've got and how to get the word out to communities um, and community partners um, so I, I i guess i'm i'm a little less comfortable with the whole ground fields discussion than the I didn't like the response on brown fields. I say scratch it too. If we don't have something specific, why is it here? Again, I, I, I'm happy to hear if they have information for us about I agree. You know, projects and things that could be done with money. Did and Pat mention anything use. specifically about Johnson? No, not not they Nothing beyond the, the plan that the village had, which uh, is not very specific. It identifies a couple possibilities, but it's not. I'd really be more interested in knowing about how we can, well, Johnson Works, for example, how, is there something we can do locally to jumpstart businesses and support businesses? Um, you know, because the comment that I made at, at our last meeting, we were talking about the rail trail, and maybe that's maybe that's the segue into this. If you want to bring people off the trail into the village, there's got to be something for them to come to. If there's nothing here, why would we want to even bring them here? May I say something? Sure. I've spent a lot of time on different bike paths and rail trails and everything during my time in Northern Vermont. And the rail trail as it stands right now, other than the little trailhead building, is very depressed. And it is not inviting to people to come here. If you look down where the, it's also not safe to cross Railroad Street at Parker and Stearns where the bike um, place is. However, if you look down the road at Parker and Stearns, there is nothing welcoming to the left. If you look to the right going um, east towards Morrisville, it is also gloom and doomy. Even in the summer, it is not inviting. Um, it's underwhelming for people to stop. They're not going to feel like there's anything to engage their children or that it's a safe choice to even drive their children through that area. Um, I mean, I think that if you want to bring the business from the rail trail into Johnson, not only do you have something to offer, but you have to have something inviting for them to want to go. And right now, it is not that space. Yeah. So that's, hey, that, that's just my two cents. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's fair. Um, but separate from the rail trail, small business forum, like I, that is an interesting idea to invite small businesses, local small businesses, and have discussions with them. I could, I could see very much 
um, federal and state reps being interested in what small businesses locally are saying and what their needs are. So we, we provide the forum for that. I'm thinking about is it replacement for the brownfield development, a you know, small like a discussion on, on small businesses. I think so. And I think we should be this is about economic development. So I think we should be very careful about the small businesses that are invited. It should be small businesses who can economic economically grow our area. And I just say that because there's different types of small businesses, as we all know, considering most of our population is in some way a small business. I would guess, I don't actually know that, but I would guess that, um, you know, small businesses can mean construction or they can mean, you know, artists and, or it can mean small businesses on storefront businesses of which we have very few, they can mean restaurants, like what type of small businesses do we want represented? in a way that actually economically grow our town. And, yeah, and are inviting to others. Yeah, I think, I think another category of economic development is looking like you actually have a downtown that has something in it. Yep. Um, Revitalization. Yeah, yeah re re revitalizing the Main Street, if you will. Um, and that's kind of what I meant by attracting people off the trail. If there's, if there's really nothing for them to come see, uh, or come visit, or come participate in locally, uh, there's not a lot of point in putting the infrastructure changes needed to get them off the trail safely into the village. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Does the council law rule development still make community visits? Yes. Part of the milk. Right. The way we're talking around this, that is something they have extra teeth in how to set things up like this. They are invited to this and they're likely to send something. The planning commission, to Eric's point, is planning as opposed to development. I mean, when we head over here, I don't know, when was it? No, it was five, three or four, or some more, man. Oh, and they did. I mean, we had to provide some general guidelines on things that we were looking for, which some of this could be that. But then they took it the next step, and, and who was going to be invited, and and they got some real horsepower. They can bring yeah. in some. Real people. Dean Weskin and that. Dean was the uh, Dean was chair of the moderator. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Um, I don't know. Maybe, I'm just wondering if that might be very helpful to have somebody like that help set the whole thing up. Yeah. But you do want to get if you get those people in this town, you want to take advantage of that opportunity. You don't get them here often. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, are other towns going to be here? I mean, it seems like we don't need to, if we're talking about rail trail, Cambridge has got to be talking about it. High Park's talking about it. Uh, there's a, a few other towns that have come up in conversation. I haven't invited other towns yet. I want to get a better feel. I, mean, I wouldn't. I, okay. I would think you'd want to keep it focused. We yeah. want all of those people to hear Johnson. We don't want them to hear Cambridge or Hyde Park. That's my thought. Yeah. Um, I just hate it, just drives me crazy. We don't have common government because we got Cambridge, Hyde Park, Johnson all trying to do compete against each other. They're the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> But there is a there is a Lamoille Valley Rail Trail um, group that's trying yeah. to look at it as a as yeah. an entity as a yeah. as a thing. Um, um, Shane, uh, I was just going to say as far as um, 
inviting businesses, small businesses, to be wary of the membership bias and try to reach out to some businesses that are no longer with us as well. Um, what what is survivorship bias? Uh, survivorship bias is the uh, tendency to focus on um, those that survive. Uh, it's a reference to World War II planes that made it back, and uh, you focus on not the areas in which those planes uh, that made it back were hit and, and survived, but the areas in which you never saw a plane return with uh, certain areas hit. So you get a different perspective from talking to businesses that did not make it than you would get from talking to businesses that are still struggling through it, but making it. Yes, store. That's a good point. Yeah. Book store and uh, you know, Chris Nelson from you know, downtown. Mm -hmm. There's the point. Okay. Uh, so, what is our next step? I think Eric's right about reaching out, reaching out to the Council of Rural Development. Development. Will you follow up with them on? So I've got uh, talking to them on on managing and running the meeting. Uh, yeah. That's what you were thinking of, yeah. or. And we may be missing something. They may have some suggestions. Yeah. If uh, you can this take, is their yeah, if you can take our notes of the things we just talked about, like the things we wanted to change about it. Yep. Give that to them and say, um, we're looking for help. We're looking for help in any way you can give it. If it means guiding us on how to facilitate a forum like this, or if it means you could help with facilitation and determining our agenda. Because I think we need help with the agenda too. That would be great. And that way they have an idea that we're looking, we're looking very specifically around town of Johnson development and bringing in these people to help with, like we need help. These are the three categories we want to focus our energy on. How can we best do that with these people? Okay. I think it would be, you know, to your point, Eric, if, if they would be willing to moderate and assist with, you know, organizing the questions. I, if they're really good at it. They're super, not a lesson are. Um, so, you know, I think it could be really much better organized if they were willing to do it. So. Okay, it's almost nine o'clock. Let's keep moving. So you got that, Brian? Yep. Next up is the lease agreement for Holcomb House care caretakers apartment. All right. Uh, this is, I apologize, this is an artifact. Um, Historic. Right? Well, you, you had actually approved me to sign it uh, at a previous meeting. I was bringing it. I was going to bring it back to you for signature. And, and so we just, so we can, we are saying we can, we can, we can strike it. Okay, next, next is Northern Border, Northern Borders update. Uh, Northern Borders Regional Commission infrastructure grants. Uh, these are a likely to be a good fit for uh, the light industrial park. Um, the rules for this year have not been published yet. Um, I was expecting them last week or this week, uh, but they weren't published as of earlier today. So there, I can talk about it at a very high level, um, which is this is still a good fit for us. Uh, the funding for this particular grant only goes up to 50% of the project, uh, but it can be matched with other federal funds in ways that most grants can't. Uh, so it only covers 50%, but that we can go for another grant to cover a portion of the remaining 50% to bring our cash match down to something more reasonable. Uh, so it's still a good fit for us. It's going to require a decent amount of cash on our part, but not. 
not outside the realm of, of what we can afford if we can combine it with an additional grant. When's it gonna be submitted by? They haven't published the rules yet. Okay. And we wouldn't know when it had to be if we if we were approved when it would have to be spent by. It is likely based on prior years that we'll have to turn in an application in March. Is this the economic infrastructure development specifically? Yes. The SEID is the program. All right. Did you put this in front of me? Did you say what? No, it's me. No, it's you. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Are you thirsty? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> There's more in the fridge. I can get one. Yeah, that's all right. Um, I guess what I was thinking was with what we just approved to get us to the Act 250 line, would this one be able to get us to the uh, construction? Yeah, that that's the the probably our best use for this. Um, yeah, it, it'll the initial application or, or then the initial letter of interest has a relatively short turnaround. Um, so we'll have to act on it in March. Um, I, I'm sure of that, but I don't know the exact dates for anything yet. Okay, so we'll add it to the agenda next time. We need yep. adding that one to every agenda, I think. Okay. It says that the grant administration compliance manual was updated February 2023. But I don't see it in the link on the state site. This is the nbrc.gov forms and other great grant administration materials. So take a second to look to. Um Okay. I'll, I'll check out the, the book you have. The on their website, it still says. Uh, yeah, we'll post updates to our website and other channels as soon as further information is available. But you should still look at that link because it was updated in February twenty. Yeah, I'll take a look at that one too. Um. Okay. Review and approve interlocal contract with Hyde Park for assessor services. So we have we have uh, the interlocal agreement for cooperation with Hyde Park on uh, assessor services. Uh, I'm going to ask Duncan for some assistance on this one, but this is this would be to engage with. Uh, an individual that has been identified through cooperation with LCPC and a few communities, uh, but the Hyde Park is the only other committee that really look at pulling the trigger with us on bringing this person on board. Uh, they're still interested despite the reduced number of hours. Uh, you know, it would house the person here, we would be managing their you know, they would be a Town of Johnson employee uh, and would be reimbursed for their time uh, at Hyde Park. The, um, I, I think I sent out a copy of the interlocal agreement, the um, offering of employment letter, et cetera. The, the one that's in here is useful because it shows all of uh, red line and strikeout changes that was made, but I do have Ryan. Did you bring a clean copy of the of the agreement? I've got it downstairs, but I apologize okay. for bring it upstairs with me. Um, so I have a clean copy of the agreement. I was hoping that we might have that for people to look at tonight. But if if anybody wants to look at this one, I've got one copy. Um, but the, the basic parameters um, are that I, I think that if we decide to go this route, 
we would need to determine when we want the contract to end or the agreement to end. I would say that we'd want it to start ASAP um, and end when when does the grant list need to actually be formally lodged by the assessors? Uh, I think May 25th. So we'd probably want it to go to at least June 1st of 2024. Mm -hmm. If we did a one year basic. That well, contract. maybe you want them to do grievance hearings? Yeah. So it'll be July 1. July 1. Okay. Because so they can hear them up until July months. one, and then it goes to the BCA, correct? Correct. If if they don't, typically the listers have had their grievance hearings in the June. month of June. Yeah. I mean, we could we could we can pick whatever day we yeah. we think is reasonable. I I assume July one probably mm -hmm. would work, but um, so anyway, the the agreement lays you know lays out the process for. Um, the hiring. Um, it stipulates that we would basically be hiring um, an uncertified appraiser or assessor. Um, and that uncertified person for the first six months would make uh, $28 an hour. Um, the next six months, $30 an hour. And after one full year and obtaining at a minimum a level one certification from PBNR, they would go to 35. So that's those terms and conditions would be spelled out in the offer of employment letter, um, which has been agreed to by Hyde Park. Hyde Park has already reviewed these documents and agreed concept to everything with a caveat. Um, they've authorized their board chair to sign with a caveat that we have legal review. Um, one of the questions on legal review is we both use the same legal firm. We both use Stitzel Page and Fletcher. To me, it makes sense to have Stitzel Page and Fletcher review for both of us. Um, however, if they feel that that's a conflict or anything, then Hyde Park has agreed to use another attorney to have their review done, and we could use Stitzel Page and Fletcher. In which case they would pay their fee and we would pay our fee. If Stitchell Page and Fletcher says we can do both, they'll share in the cost. Yeah, I would say they wouldn't, but I don't know. I mean, I if we were involved in litigation, they certainly would. Um, but if it's if it's something like a you know an agreement or a contract where both are I don't know. We, but they have to look out the best interest of their of their client. And the fact that they were both a client, I don't think they could. I don't know, but, yeah. but, but okay. we need to answer that. If if we decide to go this route, which I hope we do, um, we would need to answer that question first. Yeah. Um, and let and let Hyde Park know ASAP. If Stitzel Page and Fletcher says no way, they need their own attorney to review it. We need to let Hyde Park know ASAP. Um, so the agreement has um, the basic tenants of the agreement, and then it has a memorandum of understanding, which lays out the basics of who does what when. Um, it, it has the town of Johnson being the employer, Roseberry, um, you know, paying the person, uh, has a small $25 a week admin charge, which Hyde Park would pay to Johnson to administer the payroll piece. Um, what else? It, it defines, um, over time. Over time. Um, it defines how they would be paid. Um, Who is this person actually reporting to? Technically, um, uh, technically, to two members, one appointed by Hyde Park and one appointed by Johnson. Select board member. Select. Well, it doesn't have to be. They could. I mean, they, we could. You could appoint whoever you so want. We just have Brian or you. You could. I don't know what Hyde Park is going to do. Um, you know, gonna, but but under the agreement, each board would appoint a representative, one one representative, to do a number of things. One one would be just basic communication back and forth between the boards. Um, one would be to recommend evaluations at the six months period and at the one year period. Um, and it's you know really it's just kind of a two way communication thing uh, between the employee and and the boards. Keep everybody up to speed. Um, 
So that's, you know, that's sort of the, the basics of it, I guess. Um, oh, the other part is Terry Sabin um, would stay on for a period of a minimum of six months. Um, Terry has already indicated she's willing to do that, um, but she's also indicated that she has uh, queued up somebody from property valuation and review to work closely with uh, Justin Mason, who's the candidate, um, to you know assist him in any way possible to get up to speed to use the system, et cetera. But she has agreed that she would assist both Hyde Park and Johnson um, in a mentoring, training, and oversight uh, capacity. So her rate would be um, $55 an hour. The contract has it up to, I think, four hours a piece in Johnson and Hyde Park for a total of, no, it's eight hours a piece. Per um, week. Per week. But she won't use that much. Um, you know, we, we, I'd be surprised if she does four hours a week, candidly. Um, but um, unless she needs to do more oversight than she anticipates. Yeah, yeah. Um, in any case, the way we have proposed it, we would be within at the eight hour maximum amount, we would still be within our budgeted amount, um, which yes. is fairly important um, for, the two, for the two positions. Bottom line is, I think it's going to come in less than that, you know, because I think her time is going to be less than, yeah. you know, we've made a proposal for. It. So, um, if has anybody got any specific questions? Is that hopefully everybody had a chance to kind of look at the proposals a little bit when they sent out. What did you say the candidate's name was? I heard you mention it. Justin that. Mason. Justin Mason. Okay. He currently is um, working with Hyde Park. He is their clerk of the boards. He does agendas and minutes and stuff for the select board, planning commission and zoning board, I think. Um, so he's currently working, you know, four to five hours a week right now um, for Hyde Park, which is why we had to sort of come up yeah. with an overtime calculation. Um, Anybody have you, no. I have talked with him numerous times. I haven't met him in person, but I've talked to him on the phone a number of times. Terry Satan has interviewed him directly. Are you on the him right now? No, you always <laughs> have. He offered to come, um, but then he, he couldn't. He's, he also has offered to you know meet with any other board members if anybody wants to meet with him. Um, seems like a there's quite a lot of obituaries for him. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to hear that. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a whole different subject. <laughs> uh, I mean, I like it. I've already asked you the questions I had before. Uh, I like the idea of it. Sounds good. And runway is run out. we got to do something. we got to do something fairly yeah. like soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, does anyone want to make a motion? Yeah. Move that we accept this proposal as presented. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Would Would you be willing to to include in your motion to authorize Beth to sign the final agreements upon legal review? Yeah. And that's a friendly amendment. Perfect. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And oh, then my you, my the God. other so this is my best mate. Not a lot. <laughs> no. Should we um should we use the July first, twenty twenty four time frame as because that's blank in the agreement right now? Can I offer a suggestion? It might be easier with the fiscal year if we make it June thirtieth. Yeah. Rather than making him work, one have the contract be job. one day into the new year. Yep. And then the only other piece that I think we need to take care of is um, there is a formal offer of employment letter to Justin. There is one to Terry. I would suggest that we 
get those offer of, offer of employment letters out pending legal review um, so that they... Are those letters that are drafted somewhere? They are drafted. I included them. They were in the... Uh, yeah, the I think they should be put on, on As... town letterhead. Um, you know, Brian can put them on town letterhead and if there's any tweaks that need to be done. But I... I, I... So moved. Yeah, so moved. Do a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, it's happened. Thanks. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Durkin. Yeah, thanks for all the work. Yeah, it's been a lot of work. A lot of work. A lot of work, but I'm glad to do it. Hopefully yeah. we can get it done. Jeez. <clears throat> okay. Executive session. Let's see. Donna, now I can't get into my email, so I'm not gonna have a, uh, much luck emailing you. So maybe you can take notes for this one. Sure. Can we run away from that point? No. Uh, so I would believe that we go into executive session to discuss union contract negotiations. And this is going to be a two part motion. One would be that premature um, public disclosure of the negotiations would place the town at a significant disadvantage. So that would be the first part of my Second. motion. Okay. Uh, Liz and Derek? Aye. Aye. And the second part would be to actually go into executive session to discuss union negotiations. Oh, as, as, as permitted by yada yada yada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is yada yada? Uh, by one VSA three thirteen A one. A one. Yada yada. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All those in. Uh, is that a second? Yes. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Have it, and we are in executive session at twelve nine twelve. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw people in the waiting room. And yes, I actually enabled it this time. Uh, I don't need to stay, do I? Uh, so I will make a, uh, are we back We're here? We're out of executive session at 9.37. And we're back in public. Back in. All right. Um, I will move to ratify the union contract and Authorize Eric to sign on behalf of the town. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Have it. And we have a contract. Thank you, Eric, for all that. Thank you, Eric. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And I don't know. And Mike Dunno. And Mike Dunno. <laughs> Mike and I were the first committee. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I think we are ready for adjournment. We have uh, one that I can sign. Uh, any of these should be fine. Okay. We'll adjourn at 9.37. Bye, everyone.